Man up, man. You can't coach players like that. Really? Tom Brady tells you this all the time. I was coached by an old school Bill Belichick, which resulted in six Super Bowls. Are you out of your mind? I think that's a merit badge that those players are whining and crying down in South Florida that Vic Fangio was too tough on them. That's exactly what the Philadelphia Eagles needed in that one and six stretch run with someone to kick their freaking ass. So, do the Eagles have a problem? Do the Eagles have a problem in Vic Fangio? Miami players are saying that Vic Fangio is a horrible person and a horrible coach. Cam Smith implied that Vic Fangio was a horrible man. Javon Holland, it's a complete 180 compared to what we had in the nightmare we had a year ago. Style of coaching, his 34, his my way or the highway, Is Vic Fangio a train wreck a train wreck waiting to happen? Is he? Every single Miami player that played for Vic Fangio just about has said he was a horrible man. His schemes were outdated. His defense was outdated. Does Miami have a point? Yes or no? Do you think Vic Fangio represents the things that the Miami Dolphin players are saying? Miami's full of divas. Martin says no. Um, I still remember... Damn cheat code to unlock the Jalen Carter said he talked to Miami players and they said he's great. That's not what's being reported. That's a fucking lie. There's 10, 15 players that have said Fangio was a horrible man. Sean says no. He's just a strict old man. We can only wait and see, Sills. Flexen says. By the way, please hit the like button here. He's had success. Dolphin had injuries in 23. They also broke the sack record last year without bringing pressure. Flexen goes, I don't trust Fangio. So they had injuries on the Dolphin defense, and they played outstanding in the playoffs. I haven't given you my opinion yet. Miami players are soft. He's an old school coach. I'll be your coach. I won't be your friend. Herb Brooks. I haven't given you my opinion yet. I think Fangio either is going to be good or he's going to be on vacation. Pop Pop Fangio is a boomer. He's old school. Some players don't like that. Um... Franco's, who cares about your opinion? Hey, fuckhead, I'm not giving you my opinion. I'm telling you what the opinion of the players that he coached last year are. I'm talking about what they're saying. Easy, son. Sit down. Go put your uh, aluminum foil hat on. I'd rather have him as a leader on defense more than Patricia's overrated ass. Seals Dante Waitner said the football IQ went through the roof because of Fangio. Prince, players dislike changes and were not comfortable with new adjustments. Agreed. Okay. 
Sales, any person in a leadership position that is not flexible possesses the willingness to adapt to tools and employees they have is a problem. Um, Brian, thank you, my friend. The Eagles have been in this scheme for the last four years. True. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Frank, Frank, can I tell you that? And Xander, put Frank up there. Frank, you're the type of guy that I love on this program. <laughs> hey, hey, silly old fuck you. Here's my like. <laughs> hey, 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 here's Frank. Total Philly. Total Philly mentality. You ready? Hey, silly old fuck you. Here's my like. <laughs> You guys never stop, man. You never stop here. Miami players are pussies. <laughs> okay. Here's Big Sills' opinion. Hey, Miami players, go suck on a big one. Hey, man, you're pussies. Plain and simple. You don't like it. No one, you're going to, hey, I don't like what my coach is telling me. Shut the fuck up. Honest to God, man. Holy shit. Guys trying to bring some discipline to your undisciplined culture in South Florida. Man up, man. You can't coach players like that. Really? Tom Brady tells you this all the time. I was coached by an old school Bill Belichick, which resulted in six Super Bowls. Are you out of your mind? I think that's a merit badge that those players are whining and crying down in South Florida that Vic Fangio was too tough on them. That's exactly what the Philadelphia Eagles needed in that one and six stretch run was someone to kick their freaking ass. You needed an ass kicking, not a pat on the back when you were getting your faces kicked in. You need someone in your ass telling you you're losing it, son. Not is everything okay? I don't want players like that on my team. I'd take a lesser guy on my team. I would take a lesser dude on my team that was allowing me to coach him and get the best out of him I can versus people who complained and bitched about a scheme. Play the fucking scheme you're in, son. I'm the coach. You're the player. Know your role. Know your role. You want to know why? The Miami Dolphins were a cheap off Fendi bag because they were frauds as players. You get no tough guys down there on defense. You know what you have? Complainers. No wonder the Dolphins have an ID problem. They got an identity problem. You know what it is? You're soft. Hey, the Philadelphia Eagles may have fell apart. But have you ever heard me use the word soft on them? No. The Eagles aren't soft. They just don't have the right players on the roster. But I wouldn't call anybody soft. Is Slade not the greatest tackler? He's still a pro bowler. I mean, you know, Vic was really mean and he would <laughs> listen how this sounds. This, listen how this sounds. And I'm going to do this like a wimp. Vic was really mean. He's a really grumpy old man. And you know what? I, he's just a really angry guy. He, I, he was just mean. And he's a horrible man. Oh, my God. If that was my football team and that was the head coach and I'm Mike McDaniels and I would look at that and go, guys, shut up. You're making us look like worms. Oh, my God almighty. It's 180 degrees. Why? Because this guy's patting you on top of the head, telling you how great you are and motivating you the way you want to be motivated like you're in a kindergarten. National Football League's not kindergarten class, son. It's show up or get out. 
There's no bell curve. You're either going to get the job done or you're not. Like, there's no bell curve in the NFL. Well, he's kind of good. I don't know. You're either good or you're not. Come on, man. The more, hey, I may not like VIX 34. And that's a schematic difference of an opinion that me and him have. Because I don't think you have the, the people for it. I don't think you have the people for it. But I love the style. His press conference now goes in. Dude, I'll tell you what, what you got in there now. You got an old school Jimmy Johnson or Jim Johnson type coach who is going to lay the wood down on these guys. And if I were Howie, him and Howie are going to have major problems because that guy's going to play the best guy, no matter what that looks like. I am more confident now than I've ever been that Vic Fangio, he may not have the right people, but he's going to put the best people in positions to help that defense get better. No matter where you're drafted, first round or seventh round, you're going to play. That's the Belichick mentality. You think Bill ever really cared if you were Julian Edelman, never drafted? Or if you were Nikhil Henry, who was a guy who was taken in the first round, he got rid of his ass and kept the guys he never drafted, like Chris Hogan. Okay? Chips goes next week, you'll hate Vic. I hate his 34. Two things can be right, dude. You don't have the people for running his 34. But he's going to get in people's asses. So that's what that guy doesn't get. And by the way, hating or you mean being critical? Hey, dude. Stop being so sensitive about somebody with constructive criticism towards you or your football team. What are you, a worm? McMullen says no 3-4 for Vic. Many different fronts. That's all he's really running. Base has been a 34. Sills, do you have confidence in Vic? <clears throat> Great question, Steve. Um, Again, the scheme, and he said, John says there are going to be multiple fronts. That's probably why they don't have Josh Sweat in a position where he's um, a starter right now because they may put him in a 40 front. Look, look at this guy, Chip. Flip-flop what? I've never liked the 34. I'm telling you that this guy's at least giving it to people straight. How's that a flip-flop, jackass? I don't like his scheme. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. It doesn't seem right to run a 34 when the linebackers are the main part of it with less talent at linebacker. David, what John is telling Xander being out there is that they're going to run multiple fronts. Okay. That means that means less playing time for Jordan Davis. That means Jordan Davis's pick will be even lesser of an impact on your team if that's going to be the case. Okay, so, I mean, Jordan Davis, by the end of the year, this is going to be a telltale year where you're going to say this. It wasn't worth the pick at 13. It just wasn't worth the pick. Also, some big nickel, too, with three safeties and only one linebacker. Boy, then you're going to be relying on all the inexperience that you have in the secondary versus – would you – here, that's a good point. So before we rip it, would you rather rely on inexperience versus lack of talent? I'd rather have the youth than I would the lack of talent. 
So means play the young guys. Yeah, I'd rather have that. I, I, I would rather have that. Play the young guys. Don't play the old guys. You already know who they are. I don't want to play Bradbury anymore. If I have to take a cap hit, I've got $30 million. Take it. Get them out of there. Play the young guys. Because, get this, I know who James Bradbury is now. Think about where you are here. He was cut by the, he was cut by the Giants. He played great center field because you got tons of pressure in 22. That pressure went away, stunk. That pressure's not going to get up to set. Dude, how many people do you think could play great corner when you play zone and your defensive front four gets you 70 sacks? How good do you really have to be back there? How good do you have to be? In the secondary, when you're front... Not only the 70 sacks, but the hits on the QB. How great do you have to be? Right? It took Brandon Graham four years to be a complete player, Sills. You need to give Jordan Davis the same opportunity. If if he cut off the donuts, I think he'll be a good player this year. I think if they put him at that nose position, Steve, I think it's going to help his game a ton. But I also think you got to put him in a position of success. I don't think they – I think he's been playing – he's not a defensive tackle, and he's not a three technique. He's a guy you play on the nose or in a one technique. And by the way, I don't. do I think he's a two-gapper? I know I – they didn't two-gap at Georgia. He's not. Sills, how are the Eagles going to get consistent pressure? That's a great question. Here, here's how you get great pressure. Stop the run. Third and long. Give yourself an opportunity at pass rushing situations. By the way, this, I don't really, and I haven't studied Vic's twist, how he brings pressure, how they do games. I haven't studied that. I'll ask Coach Wants that more about that. But, hey, lining a guy up in a three technique and telling that guy, running him out of a bare front, like what Xander says that John McMullen is telling him, you know how Kellen Moore is going to bring motion? Different fronts also confuse O-lines. Let's take a look at this. O-lines. Do the Packers have a great O-line? Not really. They're not bad. Do the Falcons? No way. Do the Saints? Kind of. The Bucks? Not really. They lose the center. Left tackle's fantastic. The Browns? Great O-line. The Giants? Great left tackle. The Bengals, kind of. The Jags, not really. The Cowboys, not really. The Commanders, not really. The Rams, getting better. Baltimore, it's not what it was two years ago, their old line. Panthers, better. Steelers, improving. I mean, are they really going against top? Here are the top flight O-lines you're playing against. Browns. Baltimore and Green Bay, probably. You're not playing great old lines this year. Okay. Harry goes, the Falcons have a decent old line. Not yet, yeah, not great, though. 
which means you can schematically scheme them up. Got a lot of new faces in there. Say this to you. Sills, is Jordan Davis in shape because he was driven to work hard this offseason or did Clint push him? I think Clint had a come to Jesus conversation. As a matter of fact, Denny, I know he did. You know what? Here's what Clint, Clint's a great coach. He won't be there next year. Clint will be a defensive coordinator somewhere in the league next year. Just so happens that he worked up with Pete Carroll and all those guys up in Seattle. He's a great coordinator. And he and I have had lengthy conversations. But I'll flat out tell you what I told him about the two dudes. Davis is out of position. He's not a first and second down guy, or he's not a third down dude. I said, let me say something to you. I saw the greatest play in the history of defensive tackles for anybody 6'6", 350 pounds. I've never seen anybody run down Josh Allen like that. And that just showed me that he has that capability. The problem is, is that that kid, ever since he was at Georgia, has never been pushed to do that every single play. He plays like Jerome. He'll give you one enormously, exceptionally crazy great play. And then he'll give you three decent ones. And he'll give you one horrible one. But that one play that he makes changes the game. He used to aggravate me. He used to just totally aggravate me. He would make these insane – he'd take three guys and just beat the shit out of them, get back in the backfield – Tackle the guy. I'm telling you, I saw Jerome Brown in one game have an interception, a blocked front punt, blocked field goal, three sacks. He broke Troy Aikman's leg, and he had 20 tackles. I'm standing right next to him. I'm going, I've never seen anything like this. It was a one-man wrecking machine. You had to see it, and he was playing against guys who played in the NFL. When they were at Oklahoma. I've never seen anything like it. He, and do I think he's got that capability? No, I think the other guy does. He's got that capability. Carter. Never seen anything like it. Never seen anything like it. And we were probably the some of the two best pairs of defensive tackles that have ever played the game of college football, he and I. And I've never seen anything like that to this day. Sills, is that when y'all flipped the Booner Schooner? Yeah, they ran that shit. They ran that shit through our uh, workout. Jerome goes like this. You do that shit again, we're going to flip that thing. They had these chick cheerleaders and the the guy cheerleaders on this Booner Schooner thing, and they kind of ran that thing in there and um they we flipped it <laughs> right there at memorial stadium yeah we guy i knew somebody like jb would say we well i gotta show you this here man this is really cool because somebody was talking about jerome the other day and they were talking about um uh they were talking about he and i at miami together it was really cool, too, what he said. Um, let me see here if I can find this. This is what uh, – see if I can find that. I think you'll like this. Kind of give you – kind of give you – Keith Jackson called that game. He sure did. He sure did call that game. It was it was one of the great moments for our program when we killed that team. It's really fantastic, actually. Um. Yeah, I gotta find that. I'll find it later on. Jones just fantastic. I think Carter has that capability to be that kind of guy. I really do. I think he's got that opportunity, and I think Vic's gonna put him in that position to be able to do that. Oklahoma's okay because can't spell him. <laughs> can't spell mediocre. I like it. Very cool. <laughs> Can't spell mediocre. Is that what you're saying? Okay, I like it. Yeah. Here it is right here. 
this was a this was a column that was in the Philadelphia Inquirer. You can't blame anyone, but he never had the football. But while he was quick, notice mistakes. Da, 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 da. This is the defensive coordinator talking about our Miami front four that you had back in the day when we played Penn State. And he goes, that's a big time front four. Miami has, he said, Jerome Brown's a top pick, and we're almost more worried about Cilio than we did Brown because he was tough in every single game we saw, both as a pass rusher and also as a run stopper. Two guys are the most dominant people we have ever seen at Penn State. Right there. It's a big time front four. We were more worried about Cilio than Jerome Brown. It's not true. <laughs> it's it's a nice compliment. As a college player, Sapper Jerome. Jerome. Thank you, Sean. I mean, Philadelphia Inquirer. That may have been Mike Missinelli writing that. Yeah, I mean, that might that may have been Mike, but Jerome was just insane. Do I think that Jordan Davis has Jerome Brown capabilities? No, I think the kid Carter does. He's he's got the capabilities. Jay Brown goes, what happened? Uh, Big Sills led the Canes and tackles, had two sacks, held you guys to six first downs. I don't throw the ball. Hey, I sound like Darius Slay. <laughs> I don't throw the ball or catch it. I just kill you. <laughs> hey, Xander, I don't throw it or catch it or run with it. I just kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I just kill you. Seals, it's been announced that Trey Lance is set to start every game in the preseason. Good. Got to see if he finally can show us if he can play. So Davis is silly. Oh, is that? No. No. I had a better rookie year than he did. And I didn't last. You don't have to be very good any longer to play on Howie's team. He'll keep you around. Thing is, Slay is, a, is good in the NFL. I, Slay's been a great pro. He's been a great pro. Thank you very much, Prince. Please hit the like button. All right. So personally, those Miami guys crying about Vic, that's awesome. Philly could have had Jerome and Sapp, but we got Mamula. <laughs> Mike Mamula. God, did that guy suck. Dan Slay Cilio. Sure. Sure. Oh, hey, we'll get to A.J. Owens. Hey, so before I move on to the next topic, Xander loves A.J. Owens. So, so A.J. Owens shows up to a charity bike event. A charity bike event with a motor-powered bike. Only A.J. Owens would show up to a charity bike event and, 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 a, and a charity ride event with a motorized bike. <laughs> what a diva, man. Eh, I'm glad he showed up. The autism event's a great event they put on. A.J. Brown, a Philly legend. Let's go, Sills. <laughs> three yards, two years, 3K, two years. Epic. And a lot of whining. I gave him my money. I didn't get my money. Oh, I got it now. Oh, what? I'll be a weeder. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, we got my money. Guy cares about his direct deposit anymore, does team wins. Remember, this guy was at a strip club when the Bucks were playing the Eagles in the playoff game. He's up at a strip club called Chez Paris on table seven with Chandelier. Look at my team, man. They need me. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. He, he's at Chez Paris with Chandelier. <laughs> table five. Hey, whatever you do, don't eat the chicken salad. Don't eat chicken salad at a strip club, from what I'm told. <laughs> Plus, had to show, oh, had to show off his motorized bike. 
Yeah. AJ Owen, man. Hard at it. By the way, I think it's awesome that he showed up at the event. It's a really great event that the Eagles do. Can never go and say anything that they don't do great things in the community. Damn, Sills will do anything to talk about AJ, AJ Owens, yet, yet uh, Jalen Carter's back the entire time. Let's see here. Boxing match, butthead. No, I heard it was a strip club, and he was up there throwing uh, 50 cent pieces at him instead of dollar bills. <laughs> yeah, he's the cheapest Howie. <laughs> yeah. Don't eat fish sticks out of vending machines. That's a damn good. I love it. With a fake knee injury, allegedly. <laughs> Holy cow. Hey, Scale, do you work in the media? You must work in the media. Hey, he had a fake knee injury, allegedly. <laughs> Mark Farzad is going to join us, by the way, at 430. Please hit the like button. You guys are killing it, man. We're doing a good role here. All right. We're not taking a time out here. Not happening. Because I got a really great topic here. Sills needs AJ and Nick in order to have any content. Are you kidding me? Those guys are gold. Absolutely. Are you crazy? Who's going to give me content? Nicobe No Play Dean? Let me guess. Hold on. Who, who else? Deb and I have been fired white? Who else? Oh, it hurts. Oh, God, he's legendary Philly gold. Congratulations, kid. You figured out sports talk. It only took you three years. Holy cow, this guy has an epiphany right here on our program. Take a bow, guy. You figured out sports talk. Way to go. Nick Slander? Oh, wait, you haven't heard the best of it yet. Hey, J-Bone, you haven't heard the best of it yet. Absolutely. His new hate is on Barkley. No, I have no hate. His impact is going to be as a blocker, not as a runner. Sills, so where's Mark Holmes? Man, I hate to tell you this, man. I think you guys ran that dude off. I texted him. He won't even text me back now. It's all right. It all happens like that. Very simple. Just another dude. It's what it is. <laughs> I'll forget him like I forgot that one guy that used to come on the program. Yeah. He texts me again. I said, text sales. <laughs> He's afraid to text sales. See, I do that to people. As my wife would say, you can be intimidating. <laughs> Cosmo goes, is so Holmes is soft. Well, like the Cowboys. That's right, Steve. <laughs> Just the dude. <laughs> he said, back on track next week, but we'll see about that one. Dude, Philly fans, you ran out Ben Simmons and Mark Holmes. Holy shit. You guys ran out Mark Holmes. Whew, boy, is he going to get killed by you. If I were him, man, I wouldn't show my face next Wednesday. I might want to, hey, I might want to take a knee on this one. I just, I might want to take a knee. You, you are not, hey, you are not going to be kind to him. <laughs> hey, you are not going to be kind to that guy. That guy is, hey, Twist, you better tell your boy. I know he's your boyfriend. You better tell him, Twiz, this is all your bullshit, okay? You better tell him, man. He's going to be called Ben si Mark Ben Simmons Holmes is his new name, and you tell him I said that. <laughs> Philly 500 gave him a beating. <laughs> hey, man, it's one thing for you and I to go back and forth. But, man, you guys took a sledgehammer to that guy. Even Sue beat his ass. Hey, Twiz, your boy, he's soft. He's soft as Charmin paper. Big Marshall, I told you Mark Holmes was a bum. <laughs> he used to. <laughs> he used to get 
out of he's out of his grandma's basement. Marshall, thank you very much for the super chat, dude. Oh, uh, can we get Sills a translator? Uh, uh, wait, is that a translator during the season? Sorry, dude. What are you talking about? A, a tessellator? A telserator? What is that? You're going to have to speak English, guy. I'll need a Shohei Otani translator. <laughs> All right. 